guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope all of you are doing really, really well. And welcome back to the AFCON review. And what drama we had at the end. Ghana, we thought we were cruising. And all of a sudden, Mozambique have knocked them out. Egypt thought they got the three points against Cape Verde. And all they all continued late on. It didn't really matter. But still, loads of drama. The host getting absolutely humiliated by Equatorial Guinea. And Nigeria actually getting the job done. So loads to talk about. We're going to talk about tomorrow's matches as well. If you're excited, please do like and share the video. If you like the video in general, please subscribe. And I'm so excited. And this AFCON is crazy. It is crazy. Anyway, we'll start off with the game with the least amount of drama. It was Guinea-Bissau taking on Nigeria. And Nigeria got the job done. Even if Petsoro played a 5-4-1 formation, uh, you can't really fault it. They got the job done. And I think in tournament football, that's the most important thing. I thought Nigeria, it, they created enough chances in this game against Equatorial Guinea. I mean, not Equatorial Guinea. Guinea-Bissau. Uh, Victor Osinem again. Victor Osinem, he can't finish. I, I've been a big ad advocate for Victor Osinem to Chelsea. And this Africa combination, he's missed about four or five great chances that he should have scored. And... Uh, Despite that Nigeria win, uh, the first goal, lovely build play on the left hand side, a ball gets put put into the box, and the def Guinea Bissau defender just puts it in. Lovely goal. Now, I think Nigeria look. Uh, they start the game well. They start with energy, but I thought Guinea Bissau had their own threat. I thought Guinea Bissau came without any freedom of losing, and you thought I thought Guinea Bissau were the better team. Uh, they would they had more territory. They had more shots on target. They had more shots in general than Nigeria. But it's that, that's that quality. It's the quality that's been missing in both boxes, really, for Guinea-Bissau. Guinea-Bissau have had chances. Guinea-Bissau, if they could have defended better, could have been in a much, much better situation. And I think this game showed again. I mean, they didn't have anything to play for, really. But it still showed they are a good team. And I think Guinea-Bissau, if they can add some quality, are a good team. Nigeria, though, look, wasn't convincing. Wasn't convincing by any stretch of the imagination. Yes, they created some chances. They had an offside goal with Osinem. But overall, I think uh, Nigeria is not the best. I'm not going to say they are AFCON contenders. I'm not. They just haven't got it at the moment. The way they played. Again, I thought Guinea-Bissau on another day could have won this game if they could fear, if they could get that final pass right or they could get that final shot right. Uh, Nigeria, they, they did create though. Uh, I thought Moses Simons had a couple of good chances. You had if Osinem, of course, having two or three decent chances. So they did create uh, on the counter, but Petoro and Co, they will have to improve a lot if they're going to have to be serious about winning the Africa Cup of Nations, personally. But still, I think, you look, they got the result. They got seven points from nine. Uh, and I think, um, I didn't expect Nigeria to do this well, but still, the football, they play, it feels very, very disconnected at times. Uh, I think the defensive base is there with the fire at the back, I think. Uh, but... I think Nigeria can go far, but I don't think they've got the minerals to win it. I think they would probably struggle against a very, very top team like your Senegals, like your Moroccos. I think that's the type of team that Nigeria will struggle against, probably. Uh, but we shall, we shall see who their matchup is. Uh, it will be uh, second in Group C, so Senegal could actually end up being their matchup if Senegal do lose tomorrow. So, uh, anyway, Nigeria professional. Defensively sound, I thought defensively better. Attacking wise, I think they did create, but still not enough that from Nigeria. I expect more. Ah, uh, anyway, now we have to move to this. Oh my God, Equatorial Guinea went to Ivory Coast and humiliated Ivory Coast in front of their home fans. They did it. Equatorial Guinea. Wow, Ivory Coast. Oh my God. I mean, Ivory Coast have got a very big favor later on in the. Uh, later matches, but oh my god, this performance stunk. It stunk. Uh, I mean, it didn't stink like they played badly. I don't think they played badly, but the inability to handle pressure. These Ivorian players couldn't handle it. They got, I think, 1% chance of winning AFCON. They got 1%. I'm, this team, it has no, what you call, know-how it feels like. They don't have a clue. They panicked. And that's the type of thing you cannot do against a, a competent team like Equatorial Guinea. Now, I know they had a couple of goals disallowed, which maybe on another day could have changed the game. Uh, they also had a penalty. Shout, but Ivory Coast, man. I, how is Maxwell Corne and how is Rosa Hart not in the squad? How is the likes of Gradel getting the squad? 
How? I mean, the performance was a sham. Uh, the way they moved the ball, it was better compared to Nigeria, but still not that great. Yes, they created a couple of good chances on another they could have scored, but they didn't play like a champion team. Of course they didn't. Uh, this just gave me rise of 2014 when Brazil got smoked by Germany, but Ivory Coast, man. Ivory Coast, they couldn't handle it. They just couldn't handle it. It was a very poor performance and worrying performance because it was the pressure. It just the pressure that got to them. I thought they did do some good things in the game. I thought they were moving the ball at a nice pace. On another day, could have won it. And they had two goals. Uh, I think both were um, very, very close goals. Sangare first four in the first half. And then the second one, of course, uh, uh, I think it was a Crosso who scored actually a really, really good goal from Crosso. Uh, anyway... Uh, I thought Ivory Coast started the game well. I thought they were moving the ball nicely. I thought they were keeping loads of the ball. Equatorial Guinea were happy for them to keep the ball. And I thought Fteko Fafana was having a good game. And I thought, genuinely, for the first... first Till the Equatorial Guinea scored that first goal, I thought Ivory Coast were in control. I thought Ivory Coast were playing well. Uh, they were creating opportunities. Uh, yes, Equatorial had, Guinea had a bit of a threat, but nothing major. And then the, comes the first goal. Lovely ball play on the right-hand side. And ball gets swinged in. And it's Nuse, who's playing his football as a right back in Spain. And 1-0 to Equatorial Guinea. And from, from here, I just knew it was going to be a mountain. It was going to be a mountain for uh, Ivory Coast. Because Equatorial Guinea can defend. They can make life hell. Uh, they they needed to end this goal. And I think Ivory Coast is an inexperienced squad and they panicked. And that's what exactly happened. So 72nd, I think what was it? After that... In the second half, I thought Ivory Coast were doing some good things. And the free kick is given and Pablo Garel scores it. And from there, the game was done. 2-0, no game's done. After that, though, the, they, they didn't have the mental capacity. Uh, Equator, Guinea, going the counter-attack. Ivory Coast, no defense. Just really bolly at the back. 3-0. And then the fourth one comes as well uh, later on, which is scored by Janik Bouay. Uh, coup de toi. 4-0 losers at home. Oh my god. If, even if they win the tournament. This will sting. This will really sting Fiery Coast. If they got humiliated. They just got badly humiliated I felt. This is just. Somebody came to house and just thrashed them. That feels odd. Equatorial Guinea though. A lot of credit. Fantastic. They executed their moves well. They frustrated Ivory Coast. They just. They they took their chances, but the, of course the, some of the chances that Ivory Coast had, they Ivory Coast could have done better with, and they were clinical. They had I think what how many shots on target? They had seven shots on target. They scored four. Credit, and I think Equatorial Guinea are gonna be a problem for whoever they play in the knockouts. They are gonna be a massive problem. I can tell you that for free. Uh, they're stingy. They're hard to play against, and it looks like they can even score goals. If, so it's gonna be interesting to see how that goes. Now, Ivory Coast, the only saving grace for them is they're very much alive in this. They're very much alive. I thought at that game, it's done. It's done. Ivory Coast were done. But the later results has helped them massively. But Ivory Coast, if they turn up to the, like this in the round of 16, they might as well not qualify. But I think, look, this is the lovest of the lovest. This is no excuses. They have to wake up. Uh, Gasset, the coach, oh my God, he, he's actually such a bad coach. Defensively, there's no organization with this Iranian backline. And he actually dropped drop Diamonde as well. What, what was he thinking? And he didn't play Kasunu, he played Willy Bolly. Baffling, just baffling. Well, for Iranians, the only good news I got is you guys are well and truly in the competition. Do I think you guys, you guys got a chance of going far? No, no. These players can't handle it. They just can't. And <sighs> credit to Equator again, but I'm a coast, man. I'm a coast. Oh, anyway, looking to them late drama. Mozambique was a Ghana ends 2-2. Ghana, 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 Ghana. Ghana done. Ghana finished in this Af Africa Cup Nations. Now, the only saving grace for them is they have scored more goals than Cameroon. So, realistically, they need Cameroon and Gambia to be a draw. And they need Morocco to absolutely batter Zambia. That's the only way they're going to qualify. How they manage this? How? How did Ghana manage this? Uh, anyway, I thought Ghana started the game well. I thought they came up with energy. They wanted to play with the same pa passion. And it's a penalty. And it's correctly given as a penalty. Very, very lazy challenge from the Mozambique player. And just like that, 
can't have the penalty. Jordan now scores 1 0. And you're thinking, okay, they're going to keep the same tempo. No, they don't. They they start seeing a mid block. But I was thinking Kudus was having the ball and he had four or five Mozambique players to deal with, and there was no support. There was absolutely no support for Kudus. I was like, what the hell is this? Uh, there was zero runs being made. There was, there was zero. It was only, I think, Jordan Ayo at times. It was just nothing in attack that Ghana had after that goal. It was horrible. Uh, Mozambique were really, really building its team in the second half. They had a chance, I thought, from the corner kick, which I think they should have scored as well. But, uh, I think they fought a good save out of a Ferrari as well, the goalkeeper. And out of nowhere, the first real time Ghana do actually go and attack, they get a penalty. And I'm like, surely the game's done now. Jordan and I put it away. It was, again, correct decision. He touched his arm, penalty. And I thought for 89 minutes, Ghana were okay. Even if the performance wasn't great, okay, they got the result. Fair enough, they got the result. But... The insanity after this. Andre Ayew, the most experienced player in this Ghanaian team, does it again. Messed up, messed up at the World Cup. Messed up at AFCON. Gives away a penalty. Mozambique get a route back into the game. And at that point, I had a feeling Mozambique was going to do it. And Mozambique did. It's a lovely, lovely corner. And it took, Oh my god, the way they got that corner was absolute baffling. Uh, so, Mozambique taking some pot shots. And... It's coming out and Furi decides to touch it and that gets the corner and that, they score from that corner. So, phew, absolutely pathetic game management from Ghana. They didn't play well in the match anyway, I thought, except the first 14 minutes. That's where they only look good. But otherwise, horrible. Kudus was, by, Kudus was playing by himself. Not good enough. Not good enough. And it's coming with a long, long, long introspection into this for Ghana. If they do get knocked out. If Ghana get knocked out. Chris Hutton's done. Chris Hutton's done. I mean I think he should be regardless stacked. Pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. Credit to Mozambique. They went out on a bang. Mozambique are out of the Africa Cup Nations. Ghana still hanging by a threat. But I think tomorrow we could see Ghana eliminated. We could see Ghana eliminated by tomorrow. Uh, so Ghana. Disappointing AFCON. Again disappointing AFCON. Not good enough. Didn't play as a team. It was just literally cruising, inshallah. Not good enough. Deserved elimination. And Ghana going to start Chris Hutton. And it's going to be a new coach. Let's see who they get because I think Chris Hutton's done. And I think it's going to take quite a bit for them to make to the next round. I think personally it's done. It's finished. Mozambique have knocked out Ghana. Mozambique were knocked out themselves. They took Ghana with them. So, well, I think we'll get the confirmation tomorrow after the Guinea Gambia goes to the Cameroon game. Uh, Cape Verde was in Egypt. E I don't know how Egypt did not win this game by five goals. I I Egypt had so many chances. Mustafa Mohamed should have scored a hat trick. Mustafa Mohamed should have scored a hat trick. Uh, Aru Arush, the midfielder, should should have scored a couple of goals as well. Mahrouj, loads of chances. They had more than enough chances. They had 27 shots. Seven on target. Versus Cape Verde, six and three on target. Now, Cape Verde did make seven changes, so I think that... This, yes, they're positives for Egypt. Now, they did create and they played well. But they're not they're not winning games. It's not good mentality, is it? Three draws now, which is technically three games unbeaten, but three games without a win. And now you head into a pressure game. It's going to be interesting to see how Egypt do. But I thought Egypt created more than enough chances in this game. Now, I know you had to take it with a pinch of salt. It was Cape Verde's reserves. But still, I thought Egypt played well. I thought they showed... Uh, they were progressing the ball nicely. They moved it at a decent tempo. I thought Mahrouj was involved very, very nicely. I thought uh, Mustafa Mohamed, a threat. Uh, Mustafa Ma Mahrouj shoots. Uh, Mohamed should have uh, squared it in. And I thought Egypt created more than enough in this game to win. Uh, am I worried about their... Like, do I think this Egyptian team's got a semi-final? Final run in them? I don't know. Probably works down the route. But I think they would probably lose to a top team. They are a good team. I rate Rui Vittoria with what he's done with this Egypt national team. But personally, I think it's not looking great. I think anything more than a quarterfinal is a bonus for Egypt. I think, yes, they played well in this game, but come on, it's Kate versus B team. You should be beating them. And they should have, to be honest. The amount of chances they created is on the players. They should have finished them, finished them off. Now, the lucky thing for Egypt is that Ghana did an absolute insanity and conceded two goals later on. So... Egypt did finish second. Um, 
Egypt will qualify. But I think they'll need to improve quite a bit if you're thinking about winning AFCON, I think, personally. Uh, Cape Verde, though, um, if you talk about Cape Verde, a lovely first goal. The defense, oh yeah, forgot about talking about Egypt's defense. Egypt cannot defend. This is so odd to say. Egypt cannot defend to save their lives. And that's worrying in a big competition like this. The first goal, though, for Cape Verde comes from the right side. Lovely ball into the box. And it's a, it's a striker who plays for Benfica 2 team. And he scores. And it's 1-0 to Cape Verde. Uh, and then the late one as well. Uh, again, poor defending. El Shanavi comes out. Tries to get the ball. Doesn't. And good roundup goal late on. Uh, Mustafa Mohamed's goal was, I think, rightly given onside. He didn't touch... I mean... Uh, he didn't touch his hand, I think. And uh, Trezeguet. Trezeguet made an imp instant impact. I thought he, he was very, very good when he came on for Egypt. He scored a goal as well early, early, so that, early in the second half. So that really helped, I think, Egypt personally. But after the action of the, the final day, I mean, the final round of group games, we know Equatorial Guinea helped top this group. Uh, Nigeria helped finish second. Ivory Coast uh, finished third. And Ivory Coast... Are alive just about uh, after this crazy result with Ghana. They are alive, but improvements needed. Guinea Bissau are going home. Real, real shame. I thought they played well. Uh, Cape Verde are now top. They finished with four points clear of Egypt. Egypt finished in second with three draws, no losses. Uh, Ghana are on two points, and Ghana, I think, are practically done. Ghana are practically done. Uh, they need Cameroon Gambia to be a draw. That's the only hope they got. There's no other way realistically for them to qualify. They need Gambia versus uh, Cameroon to be a draw. And they need uh, Morocco to beat Zambia. Can't believe it. Oh uh, yeah, so Gambia, uh, Ghana, good as gone. Mozambique are going home. So that's the uh, action from today. Uh, if we look at tomorrow's action, so Gambia versus Cameroon. I think Cameroon, sh with that attack, is Rigobot Song finally going to play two strikers? Like, it's about time Rigobot Song plays two strikers. Because this three-man midfield they're playing is not working. It's not working. And I think Gambia are going to make it hard. Gambia can defend. I mean, it, they haven't shown it this competition. But I think in general, if you give them a solid structure, they can defend. And Minte has to start, man. Come on. I, I have forgot to mention this for a while. Minte has to start for Gambia. And I think Cameroon, the way they have played in the first two games, not encouraging. But I think the quality they got, and I think the way Gambia are playing, I don't think they're playing as well as Mozambique are at this competition. I just don't. And I think uh, Cameroon will win tomorrow, personally. I think Cameroon should win. I'll, will I be shocked if they don't? Not at all. Not at all. Maybe Gambia wake up. Who knows? they got quality. Minte is a quality player. But I think Cameroon will win. I think uh, they're going to have a bit too much. Uh, Rigobat Song, if he doesn't, though, <sighs> another manager on the chopping board because... A draw will eliminate Cameroon, I think. Draw will eliminate Cam Cameroon for sure. I feel. So, Cameroon have to win. Do or die. And I think they will. I think Cam Cameroon will win tomorrow. I think I'm going with a 2-0 win here for Cameroon. They beat Gambia at the last half corner. And I think that's going to continue. Uh, Guinea versus Senegal. Ah, Senegal. I think to point for Senegal. Guinea have played well at this Africa Cup Nation. They have looked very, very good. I think this is going to be a difficult match for Senegal. I think this is the type of game that Senegal might get exposed in. But I think so. I think Senegal at times did play lovely football. But I think Guinea can do something. I definitely do believe Guinea can do something in this game against uh, Senegal. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. Now, do I think they will? Probably not. I think Senegal with the experience are going to be a bit too good, I think, personally. I think Guinea are a good team. They're a very, very improving team. I think they've played well at the two matches so far, the Africa Cup Nations. So, I am going to back them tomorrow to get a result. I think they got a result against Senegal at the last half con. So, I'm going to back them again. I'm going to go with a 2-2 draw uh, between Guinea and Senegal. Uh, Marish, Mauritania versus uh, Algeria. Algeria need a point technically to qualify. Their goal difference favours them. Uh, Algeria, I think, I think Algeria have played well. I think Algeria have played well at times. It's just been the clinical edge. It's been not been there. Or, in general, the pa final pass, the poor decision-making... There's no excuses tomorrow. They have to win. If they do not win tomorrow, they are going home. I mean, no. If they do not, if they do not, uh, if they lose, that's when they're going home. If they draw, they're going through. If they win, they're going through. And I think Mauritania, they are going to be a pain. They are going to be a pain. But the good thing for Algeria is Mauritania will have to come out and play. 
So if Algeria just keep their heads, use the basics, do the basics right, I think they should be winning. They should be winning, but you'd never know. But I think I think they should be fine. I think Algeria, they've got a bit too much quality. Uh, massive controversy regarding Mahrez. I think Mahrez probably comes out and puts a very, very good performance. I think they've got a lot of talent. Uh, Balmadi has to pick it, though. I am going with a narrow E-King win here for Algeria. I'm going 1-0. Um, oh, Angola was a Burkina Faso. I think this game's in a draw. I think Angola showed a really, really good account of themselves against uh, Mauritania. I thought they played well. They created numerous chances. Burkina Faso in the two games have not impressed me one bit. Burkina Faso have not impressed me one bit. I wouldn't even be surprised if Angola win tomorrow. I think Angola will... I think at, at the start might respect Burkina and let them have the ball. Might take them a bit of a while to get going like it's, it took a similar pattern for them against Algeria in the second half they really really start going and they've got some naturally very good players I really really like some of these uh, Angolan players Jelson Dalla, Gilberto some very good players Burkina Faso they just don't look the same to me I don't know why Burkina Faso this AFCON don't look the same to me I just don't I don't find them impressive at the moment so I am going with a 2-2 draw here Angola 2 Burkina Faso 2 and according to my prediction, so Cameroon will be so Gambia would finish on none, Cameroon would finish on four, Guinea would finish on five, Senegal would finish on seven, and Cameroon would be heading through. And that will see, I think, Garland's elimination for most likely reasons. Uh, according to my groups, I said one 0 win for Algeria, so that would be plus one Algeria. Yeah, Algeria would be on five points with four plus. Uh, four goals scored, three conceded. Uh, Angola, I said a 1-1 draw. So, Angola will top this group tomorrow. Angola will top the group. Algeria will come second, in my opinion. And Burkina Faso will come third, in my predictions. According to my predictions. Anyway, actually, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we'll be close, right? Yeah. I'm not sure. I think we'll find out how it works tomorrow. Anyway, uh, I think Angola, Burkina and Algeria, will, all three will qualify personally. Anyway, this was your AFCON review plus your preview for tomorrow's game. We predicted the score lines. Let's see how it goes. If you like the video, please do like and share the video. If you like the video in general, please subscribe to the channel. Leave me opinion in the comments about everything that I have discussed in the video. And leave me a prediction for tomorrow's match as well. Very, very key sets of matches coming up. And if you like the video, please do not... Do not forget to subscribe to the channel as well. It helps that channel out a lot.